Hello and welcome to Fritz Spark tutorial. This is Big Data Guy and in this tutorial we are going to learn about group by operation and inbuilt function in Spark. So let's get started. In previous tutorial we finished processing our data frame and cleaned the data that is compatible for us to perform additional stock analysis on. So let's say you want to find out the maximum stock price that a stock has opened on in last five years. How do you do that? Well, all you need to do is just write a group, group by operation. So we have five years of data and we have cleaned the data and stored it into the data frame called cleaned stocks. So you're going to use the data frame and just say clean stock dot group by and the column that you want to group by, which is ticker in this case, because we want to be able to find out the maximum open price for a stock in the last five years. So in that case, the ticker is the column that you're going to do group by by. And the aggregation function that we want to perform on and on what column. So we want to do a maximum and open column. And let's see what do we get for the group by operation. So you can see that we have 10 unique stocks and then the maximum open price for each of those stock, right? But interestingly, what we see over here is that the column name is max open. So how do we go and, you know, uh, rename the column name in a good, good way? So in order to rename the column, all you need to do is rewrite this statement using with rename column function. So I'm just going to copy that and write with column rename, renamed and I want to rename max open to the max stock price and then we can just say show 15 and as you can see the column has been renamed. Spark has many inbuilt function. Some functions are for aggregation after performing a group by, while other functions are for processing the data in data frame. So for example, if you want to extract the year out of date column, or if you want to extract the day out of the date column, that we are going to look at pretty soon. So let's import the Spark inbuilt function. So we are going to just say import pyspark.sql.functions as func. So these are like Spark function. And then what we are going to do is we are just going to copy this line and we are just going to paste it. And instead of using max, we are going to use aggregation and then we are going to use func.max. So this is Spark's inbuilt aggregation function, max. And then what we are going to do is we are going to use another function called alias. And then in alias, we are going to say that go ahead and make this max stock price. And then we can say dot show 15. And this is going to again perform the same operation, right? So let's go ahead and say that we want to perform two different aggregation on two different columns, right? So we want to find out the total volume of the stocks in last five year and then the maximum stock price. How do we do that? Well, in that case, all you need to do is you just need to copy this and then we are going to look at it. So we are going to use one aggregation function on first column, which is we want to be able to do maximum on the stock price, the open, open column. And then the second function that we want to do is sum and that would be on volume and then we are going to say total volume, right? And then we can just say that show 15. And uh, there is a spelling mistake, which is alias. And we should be good to go. And there we go. Now we have gotten a total volume. So a different type of operation that you could perform after doing a group by on different column. And now what we are going to look at is how do we perform group by using multiple columns, right? So to do that, first what we are going to do is we are going to extract some of the data out of the column, right? So for example, um, an interesting operation that you could do is you want to find out the maximum stock price in a year or maximum stock price in a month, or you might want to find out the maximum stock price in the given week of year, 
right? So in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to go and split our date column into different component. And we are going to do that using Sparks in build function. So let's take our base data frame, which is cleaned stock. And what we are going to do is we are going to assign the clean stock um, to clean stock data frame. But the only thing that we are going to do over here is that we are going to use inbuilt function to extract the different parts, right? So we're going to say with column. And the first thing that we want to extract is the year out of date time column, right? So you're going to say func, which is the Python, uh, sorry, Sparks inbuilt functions over here. And what we want to use is we want to extract year. So we're just going to use the year function, Sparks inbuilt function year. And then we are going to provide the column name, which is the parsed date, right? So let's go and look at the name and copy just in case um, so that we don't make any spelling mistake. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that we want to do parse date. At the same time, we want to do another operation. So I'm just going to copy paste this with, with column um, operation. And then I'm going to say that I want to extract the month out of this part parse date. And for that, we are going to be using month function. And then lastly, I again want to go ahead and extract day out of the column using day of month column, uh, sorry, month function. And then lastly, I'm going to extract the week of year. Again, I'm going to copy this and then I'm basically going to say with column and then we're going to say week. This is week of year. And all we are going to say is we are going to say uh, week of year, right? So let's go ahead and execute this code. And it says that it is missing columns. So it should be actually parenthesis that we are missing as a result of copy operation. So we are just going to make sure that all parentheses are matching and then we can execute this and we have a data frame. Now this data frame can be visualized and we can go ahead and look at this and then say show 10 and let's look at this. So as you can see, now we have been able to extract year, month, day and week out of the parse date. And this actually tells you the week of the year that the date actually falls on. Right. So with this information on our hand, what we can do is we can actually determine the highest opening price for a stock. Right. And the lowest opening price for a stock in a year, in a month and also in a week for that particular year and month. Right. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we are going to do is again, we are going to go ahead and perform a group by operation. And this is going to be simple. All we are going to do is we are going to say cleaned stocks dot group by. Now we have two columns that we want to group by, which is the ticker. And the second column that we want to group by is the year, right? Because you want to find out the maximum stock price and the minimum stock price for a given stock in a year, right? And the aggregation function is going to be same as this. So I'm just going to copy this. I want to get the the uh, maximum stock price. So I'm going to say that this is going to be yearly high, right, for the open price. And then I also want to get the minimum uh, open price, and this is going to be yearly low, right? And then I can go and execute this. Actually, I need to store this. I'm going to store it as yearly aggregation, right? So Y A R L Y yearly. And then I'm going to go and uh, go and see the yearly stock price, right? So I can go and see that. So now you can see we have gotten for each stock, BRKB, MSFT, Meta, all of the stock, we have gotten yearly high and yearly low price, right? So for 2023, 2018, 2021, and so on, right? Similarly, I can copy this and then I can calculate the same for monthly price. And I can also calculate the same for weekly price as well, right? So I'm just going to copy this and 
what you're going to do is you're going to create two different data frames now one is for the weekly and other one is for the monthly right so what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to say monthly and then second one is going to be weekly and in this one we are just going to add one more um, group by column which is the month and in this one it's going to be the week right and what we want to do what you want to name them is month high and month low and same similarly week high and week low right so let's go ahead and do that right so once we execute this notice what happens is that when you execute this the code doesn't go and you know start calculating the group by operation so in spark there is two things one thing is called action and other is known as transformation so spark is lazily evaluated meaning when you execute the code and if it does not need to go and calculate the result of the data frame it is not going to go and perform any computation it is only when you need the result of the data frame it is going to start the computation hence spark is lazily evaluated right so there are two types of operation in spark one is known as transformation and other one is known as action what transformation does is that it transforms the data so this is a transformation operation when you perform group by or when you perform join or when we perform any sort of like extraction on the spark data frame column right using inbuilt function these are transformations you are doing transformation on the data when you execute this pieces of code it does not go ahead and start the computation it is only when you call action in spark then it's going to go and start the execution so what are the action functions so we have, we have been using a classic action function called show so when you say show you're going to see that it starts computation I'm going to show you how I'm 100% sure that it starts the um, calculation after I execute the action function, which is show over here. So when I actually execute this cell, you know what is going to happen? It is, as you can see, it starts executing. For example, if you go and look at some of the previous function, you, you might see the stage being showing up over here. What stage of computation has, has been performed so far? just below this when it's doing the computation, right? So that's how I'm 100% sure that as soon as you call the action functions, such as show, it's going to start executing, right? And we're going to look at this again when we do a join operation. And at that point, we'll be you know, certain that definitely that is the case, right? So anyway, so we have done this for yearly, we have done this for monthly, and we, are, we have also done this for weekly as well. So we can go ahead and look at the weekly data. And now we have the month high, month low, week high, week low, and year high and year low, right? And this is actually useful because, you know, uh, this can be actually used as a data point to determine whether or not I should buy the stock today, right? You could look at like, what was the monthly high? What was the, um, you know, weekly high versus what's the yearly high? And similarly low as well. And then you could determine that if the price is lower than, you know, monthly low, then it's in your interest monthly as well as weekly low and potentially yearly low, then it's in your interest to buy that stock on that given day. And this data, uh, this data is used all the time by broker in order to you know, make decisions in terms of whether to buy a stock or not, right? And oftentimes what happens is that they also have additional data points such as moving averages, and we are going to see how to calculate moving averages in next few tutorials. But they can also look at like moving averages to determine, um, you know, whether or not they should buy data, right? Uh, whether or not they should buy stock. Now, what you can do interestingly is that let's say you want to determine the spread between weekly, week high and week low, right? So you want to see what is the difference between uh, these two prices. You could definitely do that. All you need to do is pretty simple. You can say that weekly of spread is equal to weekly and then uh, the column that i want to subtract is weekly week high minus week low right and then i can go ahead and visualize this data frame sorry uh, this should be actually um, with column right so i, I need to say with column 
and then uh, I need to go ahead and say that um, you know I want to create a new column called spread and I want to the way that I'm going to calculate this is like this and as you can see the spread has been calculated so roughly ten dollars between these two values roughly four dollars between these two values and so on now you can see there are like so many decimal points after this number and the reason for that is that it is losing some precision during the calculation uh, typically it should not happen but in this case it's happening so a simple round operation on this could resolve this issue we're not going to look at the round operation but you know uh, you get the point that if you want to do a column level multiplication uh, addition or subtraction you could use a simple uh, manipulation operation to do that right so anyway that is it for this tutorial and what we are going to do is we are going to learn about joint function uh, in next tutorial so see you in next tutorial thank you bye